Hey everyone, I hope all of you are doing well today and welcome back to Planet Zoo and Ozaru where today we are going to build two habitats, the Himalayan bear one which we are starting off right now with and the timber wolves. And I'm already going to say I will probably mispronounce wolves because for some reason my brain just wants to say wolves. I don't know why. But anyway, back to what we're actually building. So for the Himalayan bear habitat, it actually surprised me because for I think two episodes now I've been complaining about, you know, the coverage meter that pops up when, well, you go into the animal menu to see like if the habitat is right for them. And I thought like, you know, when we built the snow leopard habitat, um, yeah, they don't actually like the coverage of their habitat because it's way too covered, like there are too many trees and such. For the Himalayan bear one, I was kind of surprised that they actually wanted more. So I could go full in with the forest and build just, well, the kind of like the habitat of my dreams where I just built way too many trees and plants and all of that. Also quickly, you know, building a little bit of like an entrance thingy. I sadly forgot to actually do the plants here because I kind of got carried away while building the habitat for the Himalayan bears. So the entrance is a little bit just like bear rocks right now. I'm going to go back into that probably in like the next episode because I want to build also like some sort of like actual proper entrance, like some kind of gate or something. But yeah, the entrance also later makes a little bit of like a return in the Timberwolves one. <laughs> Because there is an interesting story to the Timberwolves. And I was kind of surprised by how the Timberwolves habitat uh, turned out. Let's just say, in, uh, I don't know if it's a good thing or just like, why did I go there? <laughs> anyway, so for the Himalayan bear habitat, most of what you will see, well, in the coming like five, well, not five, <laughs> I'm being dramatic. Like the coming like three minutes is doing the rock work. And I'm really glad with like the rocks that we have been provided with because well most of them are like flat on like at least one side there are some rocks that are like oddly shaped I would say but most of them have at least one flat side so it makes it easy to like you know hide them beneath let's say pots or something basically where, that you can just build rock pots in a good way or like rock bridges just because of the flat side and if you like turn them a little bit sideways then I don't know the effect of like having flat rocks and then beneath that like some like sloped rocks I don't know why but it just is really satisfying to me <laughs> yeah also like building like a little bit of like a I would say a stage and I don't know I'm really proud actually of how the bear habitat turned out even though it's a lot of rocks like I went insane but that's mostly because the rock texture that is in game or at least is in this biome doesn't really fit with like the eastern Asian feel that I want for Ozaru so yeah I have to cover all of it up with rocks and I actually also need to build their cave full of rocks because also yes I've been using the tropical rocks everywhere I actually haven't used any other type of rock just because I like the color of them and the animals don't complain about like where the rock is from they complain about the plants but not the rock so that's I would say well kind of normal I don't think any animal would complain about rocks though I did want to make sure that it's like it feels a little bit more natural like this is one thing where like flat rocks don't really go well because they feel like they're just being built out of concrete. So that's again where like sloping makes it look a little bit more natural. And yeah, I don't really like it when zoos don't look like natural. Like if a habitat of an animal is almost completely concrete and you can really see it as concrete, like there's no attempt at making it look like the natural environment of, his, of the animal. Yeah, I just, I don't like that. And there have been some zoos where I've just seen that and, well, yeah, I don't like those zoos. But then again, like, I don't 
ever going to build probably a realistic zoo. That's just not really... I don't know, that's just not why I want to build. Like, for some reason building realistic things just never really, you know... In some way, like for other people, there might be like, Oh, you know, I want to build something very realistic. I want to build, you know, an actual zoo. Like you can actually, with most of the tools that have been provided in Plant Zoo, you can actually really do that very well. But for some reason, it always felt for me, at least that was like limiting a little bit. Like I can't go completely crazy while building. But yeah, that's just like an opinion or just like my way of building. I just... I mean, I have a plan for what kind of zoo I want to build at full release. And um, yeah, that's completely uh, not realistic. Let's just say I've looked up images of floating islands. That's the only thing I will say about it. And uh, yeah, it's really fun to research though, because you just look at all these like amazing pictures and art of well, very fantastical elements and such. But yeah, back to what we're actually building because I tend to... Well, I think you all know by now that I just tend to ramble. And most of the commentary is not, well, the most useful. Though I do hope that you don't hate me for that. I just really like to have fun with the commentary and not really... Well... I would be the worst teacher anyway. If I try to make something like useful, I'm probably sick. Or in any other way, just like I shouldn't do that. Because, uh, yeah. Again, like I tend to ramble. So if I try to make something useful, like a building tutorial, then um, I would probably, again, leave you with more questions than answers. But yeah. I do have one tip though, if you are making like a habitat with like a huge rock wall, paint it first. Because for a long time I was just painting the entire habitat because there is in some way the long grass is just some way hidden beneath all the rocks. So uh, if you build an habitat and you want to have like an actual like good habitat that the animals like it when it comes to terrain. Paint it first before you do like all the rocks and scenery and plants and such. Because a lot of it gets hidden. And yeah, the giant, well not giant, but the cave. Yeah, I really like how it's turned out. I'm probably going to say that for a lot of things. But in this habitat you will also see me put down probably a lot more dead trees than in all the other habitats combined. And that's because, uh, well... I said in the leopard one, I think, that like, oh no, it's the Indian elephant one where I thought like, oh, you know, the animals would, you know, rub up against the trees or like scratch themselves against the trees and then they would either, well, break the trees or in some way they would die. And uh, that's really true for the bears because, I mean, their enrichment item is literally a scratching pole. So I just thought like, oh, you know, if you place trees there, they are also going to use the trees. So it also adds a little bit more of like that mountainous feel. I I don't know why like dead trees for me make it feel like mountainous. But in a way it works, especially when you like combine them a lot with like the actual living trees. And then also, you know, throw them down on the ground and such. And yeah, I really like the Himalayan bears actually. I think for now, they are some of my favorite animals so far. Just because the, they just constantly sit like a teddy bear. And they are really fluffy. So I always have a weak spot for fluffy animals. But then also, you know, you will see it in like, well, maybe like five seconds. That they just constantly just sit on their butt. And I just really like them for that. I do have another tip actually. And here I said like I'm not good at you know teaching stuff. But anyway. When placing trees. Try to avoid placing the same tree. In the same position. Right next to the same tree. So that it looks a bit more natural. Like you can put the same trees next to each other. But you know move them. So that they don't look like they have been. 
Well, if you at least want a natural looking habitat or a zoo. You want it to look like, you know, a seed of the tree just fell down somewhere. Not that it was planted. If you want something to look really natural. And yes, I also said at the beginning like, oh, you know, the coverage of the Himalayan bears is actually, well, they need a lot more than the snow leopards. And I actually needed to also cover like the... Well, I didn't need to, but I wanted to because the bears accepted it. Be well, let's just say I also put a lot of trees on like the actual edge of the zoo. This also is, yes, we're not going farther beyond because right now we're also like over the halfway point of the beta. So I'm happy with how far we've gone so far. And I do think that we can finish Ozaru because... After this, there will be, I think, two more habitats that we're going to build. I haven't decided yet on the animals. So if you are, are like, oh, this animal could really work for Ozaru, don't be afraid to put it down in the comments. I always read the comments. And I, I think I've responded so far to every comment you guys have posted. And I'm, again, really thankful and really honored by all the amount of, like, I would say... I wouldn't say likes, but how much you guys, well, basically watch the videos. <laughs> anyway, otherwise I'm going into like a very like, uh, you know, the, the, I can't even really explain it. But again, I'm just really thankful that you guys are here for the road of Ozaru. But I got a comment, not on the videos, but just outside of the videos, because I am on like the Lady Designers Discord, I'm usually there, I'm on Rudy Rankumel's Discord, and someone did ask like, oh, you know, I'm really excited about the river, because I actually, most of like the river, which you see right now, I haven't built on screen, so I thought like, oh, you know, we, I did a little bit on the river in well, this was, I would say, building session because I do build in sessions. I don't build like for six hours straight. However, I could, but I shouldn't. But yeah, I just built a little bit of like the river and probably like the last episode of Ozaru is just going to be completing the river, the Ozaru River. Yeah, I have no clue how like the village part of Ozaru is called, but the river is Ozaru. That's where the name came from. No, I'm lying. The name literally just was because it looked nice when typed out. But anyway, back to what we're building, because now we're actually starting with the timber wolf. 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 Again, I'm going to mispronounce it because for some reason my brain just doesn't want to say wolf correctly. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, the entrance or like the keeper entrance to the timber wolf habitat is um it was a little bit annoying to build because i wanted it to be in like the nook or like the cranny of the pot but it didn't work because the pot actually isn't on like the ground there so it just didn't recognize that you know the pot could go there this is not a bug, this is just because I'm awful with the bots. So, <laughs> yeah, eventually I just had to kind of work around it. And in a way, I'm actually happy with how I now placed the keeper's entrance because it's a little bit more hidden away. Again, if you want a realistic zoo, this actually is like a possibility because you don't want your guests to see, you know, the behind the scenes things. Also, yeah, again, the flat rocks really work well now because you can like really put them like almost at the pads instead of, you know, having to really wiggle them around a lot. And you are going to see me place like the biggest rock a lot in this video because, well, they are just like filler rocks, I would say. Like they are the rocks that you start off with and then you place the smaller rocks to make it in something a little bit more special to make like actual like good looking things the bigger rock is just there to like fill up the place and basically just give you coverage again need to cover all of the rock work 
or at least rock work, all of the natural spent terrain to uh, make it look a little bit more like it's an actual Eastern Asian park. Even though all the rocks are tropical. <laughs> so yeah. In a way, again, really happy with how everything turned out. And the timber wolves were actually an interesting habitat because... Well, you saw me lay out how big the habitat was in the first place. And they didn't like that, they thought it was too small. Also, like, right after I placed or like sent the timber wolves to their habitat, they got babies. Like, right away. Like, I unpaused the game. Five minutes later, I didn't actually get the message of like, oh, you know, timber wolf whatever is pregnant. I immediately got the message, timber wolf has given birth. So, uh, yeah. They went straight at it. <laughs> Even though their habitat was way too small. And I did complain about like, Oh, you know, I don't have any babies, and then I had a lot of animal babies, and now I am at the standstill again. So, uh, I don't know what is happening. Also, don't look at, like, all the messages of, like, uh, animal welfare, because, well, I'm not taking bad care of my animals. There was just, I think, an issue with the, I think, the water system, that some of, like, the, well, the... How do you call them? The water pumps or something were not working and my mechanics were all doing something. Or I just forgot to place enough mechanics, but uh, yeah. Also, I placed, like I had the p-file habitat in the second episode that I made. And uh, yeah, I did, I think, say in like the episode after that or the one after that. No, in the, in the episode after that, that I changed the PFAS to the bigger habitat. And like the central habitat with the Indian elephants and the rhinos. And I placed the, well, turtles in the original PFAS habitat. And I thought like, oh, you know, everyone is complaining about the turtles starving or the tortoises. They are not turtles because they are, you know, they are land. I'm, I just like to call them turtles for some reason. But anyway, you know, I heard a lot of people say like, oh, you know, they're continuously starving because they're so slow. I for a long time didn't have that problem. And then suddenly they all were starving. And I had to literally just move them to their food thingy constantly. But yeah, the again, the timber wolves are, I really like their habitat. For some reason. Well, I know the reason and I'm going to... Well, it's going to be shown later on. And it's kind of dark. And uh, I'm kind of... Uh, I don't know why I built it. It suddenly just popped into my brain of like... You know, let's make this a little bit darker. <laughs> and it's... Yeah, I'm not joking. It's actually quite dark. Well, in a way, it also fits because the Timberwolves have actually like that real like wolf howl again i'm probably mi mispronouncing wolves or wolves <laughs> yeah my brain just wants to say wolves so yeah bear with me <laughs> i'm also aware of that but the wolves have like their real wolf howl which for some reason is always creepy like hearing a wolf howl like they are adorable creatures like as I said, they immediately got babies, and their babies are the fluffiest animal in the zoo right now. Maybe until the Himalayan bears finally get a baby, but I... For some reason, I don't see that happening anymore. I might be wrong, but... Yeah. Anyway, they immediately got babies for some reason. I don't know why, because they weren't complaining about their habitat being way too small. I actually removed rocks, because I thought that, like... Oh, maybe the rocks are, you know, making the habitat smaller. No. Also, it was actually a little bit of like a trial thing where I didn't have like an actual fence on one side of the habitat. And I thought like, alright, I need to make it so that the wolves don't jump off. 
and uh, yeah that's why you see me place down rocks and then immediately like smashing them into the wall because I just thought like all right if I give them space to jump they will jump because the animals just like to escape Anyway, so the idea for the rest of the habitat, because you, well, you didn't see it on screen, but I basically doubled their habitat and now they're suddenly like, they were first at like 20% of like, they wanted more space and now they were like constantly at 100, even though they, well, the group doubled because they had two babies. But yeah, I just thought like, all right, first I want to build a pagoda. Then I thought like, yeah, that's a little bit boring and it's like right in view of the big, well, sort of pagoda building that's still not usable by the elephants, but is in their habitat and well. Then immediately I just thought like, all right, let's lower this terrain. Let's give the habitat a little bit more of like a layered feel. And um, for some reason, I just immediately thought rock slide or mud slide or just basically earthquake where half the terrain just kind of fell into the river a little bit and um, yeah this is where it got slightly dark because I copied like the base of the pagoda we built in the first episode and basically took half of it and smashed it down so that it looked like the well it's not a pagoda here anymore it was a well I thought like oh you know it's a house or something and when the earthquake or something happened Half of the house just fell down. And then it's, well, it's a little bit easy work to make things look ruined because you basically just move stuff around, deleting the, like, some parts of it. And then, yeah, just basically moving things around to look broken. And also, like, you know, moving it a little bit to, like, make it feel a little bit twisted and such. Also, there's like a tree stump there and I removed that because, of course, if you have a house, you don't have a tree growing inside of it. And if you do, please send me a picture because I would love to see that if you have a tree growing in your house. Like, actually in your house. Not in like, you know, like some kind of like um, inside garden or something, but actually growing inside your house. But yeah, so I removed that tree stump and... Um, I built a small graveyard and you're not seeing it right now but I built four graves two larger ones and two smaller ones the smaller ones are exactly for what you think the, the ones buried there are but it just with the wolves howling and the mist that I applied it just felt really like all right this needs a graveyard just to go completely extreme on it and you can't see this from like the rest of us out so it's just like actually you can't see this from like the guest view because this is way too far into the wolf habitat and there's no paths alongside it but i don't know it's like a, i wanted to say cute but it's like a little bit of like a you need to really know what what's well basically what went into it or like you need to know a little bit about like storytelling i would say like i like to have things that to actually have a story and it i'm surprised how fast i found the pieces to make a grave and i don't know if i should be happy or concerned about that but anyway that's going to be it for today i hope you enjoyed the video if you do don't forget to hit the like button because it does help out a lot and i hope to see you back in the next video i wish you all an amazing day bye bye